Hi guys, Alice Taylor down at Lytham Golf Academy and today we're going to have a little shootout between two of the low spin drivers on the market. So we're going to co uh, compare the Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero with the TaylorMade M3. Now I have got more of the weight up in the face with the Rogue and I have got both of the weights forward in the M3. So both of these set up to spin as low as possible. I'm going to hit five real balls with Rogue, then five real balls with M3. We're going to look at some numbers. We're going to kind of watch some ball flight and see how they get out there. Obviously, I'm in the market for a new driver this year, and I will be doing a video shortly with my, kind of my top three or four shooting out. I suspect from initial tests that I've done, these two are <clears throat> going to be in my top four. So let's start with Rogue. <clears throat> I'm not going to get too much into some of the the technical stuff in these drivers. That's what the kind of review videos on the individuals are for. But this is just to see kind of how they perform against each other. Let's see who comes out on top. We'll look for the longest one, but also the average. So I do like the way the Rogue sits behind the golf ball. Off we go. So just slightly bottomy with the strike. And that one getting out there. And I'm pretty sure when we look at the numbers for that one, we'll see that the spins jumped up. So even though it's a low spin driver, you still got to do your end of the bargain and hit it out the middle. I mean, that wasn't awful, but it definitely felt low on the face. One felt more solid and would be more of my normal shape. <clears throat> so again, that was better. Still don't feel from those first two, I've really, really got hold of one. But it's been interesting watching kind of some of the new drivers coming out and some of the tour players, particularly some of the tailor-made guys talking about how they only maybe hit one or two really well-struck drives around. So it is that quality of the bad one and what the average becomes. Shot number three with Sub-Zero. We just not turn over a little, tiny little cut on that one. Felt a nice solid strike. And so that's kind of probably more what I would expect to see with driver for distance wise. So a couple more, let's see if we can really get a very, very good one. Okay, I'm just not getting the shaping back quite as much as I would normally get, but not displeased with that one. One final one then with Sub-Zero. I'll try and really go after this one, see if we can get a little bit more speed out of it as well. Nope, right out the toe. So we see a lot of shape on that one. And I'd expect the spin to be down, obviously lost accuracy. Okay, so let's switch over onto M3. And probably not as good as I've hit in warming up, but it's not always about those very best ones. But M3, I think for me, obviously looks, feels very, very different to the Callaway. Again, I think any of you guys that have watched my videos, I made the point that I tested this without kind of the right shaft when it first came out. I just even more highlighted to me the benefits of being fitted properly for driver. But we've got some okay ones with Sub-Zero. Let's see how M3 gets it out there. Healy. A little bit low, a little bit healy. So... Let me see if Twist Face is helping me out there. 
it's maybe not seen with the twist face stuff a massive change in the accuracy when I've tested but you know nothing's magic with driver you've still got to put a decent swing on it okay shot number two Something felt higher up the face. Again, just not quite got it shaping back. <clears throat> so definitely for me, and when I do my shootout video to pick my driver, it's not just gonna be on, on kind of numbers and things like that. I mean, here, I'm just trying to hit these little draw, not a lot of shape on the modern drivers when they don't spin too much, but, I will be hitting some draws and fades because I do like working the ball with driver. But for this, this is just trying to see who comes out on top. It felt very slightly toey. Only a tiny bit though, so that one should have really got out there. That was really good. And last couple. This one just normal swing and then the final one I'll really have a go at. Just hit that very healy. And certainly that's what twist face is claiming that that should get back a little bit more. So one final one. And just to be fair to the Callaway Trying to just really go after this one, get this one out as far as I can. Straight down the range. Okay, that felt just a tiny bit out the toe. But again, some good numbers. Okay guys, so, solid. You know, not, still not hitting it right out the middle, but for me, and I stress this a lot, you know, I don't hit it out the middle of the club every time. The best players in the world don't either. Their miss is a little bit tighter than mine, as you'd expect. But let's look at some numbers. We're gonna see what, which one had the longest drive, but then which one as an average gave the best performance. Okay guys, so we look at club head speeds, 110 for both. We're looking at ball speeds fractionally quicker with the Rogue at nearly 158, just under 157. Ball striking kind of out the middle, but not absolutely flushed. Launching absolutely identically. Backspin of 2,600 and just under 2,700, so almost identical. Peak height, almost identical. And the average carry, M3 just edging, only by four yards. But then we look at the longest tee shot, uh, the longest drive. Certainly for me, we had one at 300 with M3, carrying 272. So M3 taking it on both competitions on that video. Right then guys, so two competitions, like I said there, there was a which one went the furthest on a one-off drive? Taylor made M3. Which one was the longest as an average? Again, Taylor made M3. So, certainly for this video, the M3 has come out on top. Now, I was maybe a little bit surprised with that, because certainly in testing over the last few days, probably felt the Rogue had come out just slightly on top. So that was interesting. So it ultimately comes down to you as an individual and maybe just those few millimetres difference on strike. But are they both low spin? They're both set up to spin low. Again, problem with those with strike. I didn't get the spin as low as, as I have seen it, but that comes down to me, not the driver. But I think both very, very good drivers. I think certainly looks-wise massively different. Feel-wise, I think quite different as well this year. But if you're in the market for a new driver, and particularly if you're somebody who spins the ball too much, M3 and Rogue Sub-Zero are two of the drivers that you should be trying this year. Comment below, let me know if you've tried both. See which one came out on top for you. Be interesting to know if you've already got one of these in the bag. But as ever, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I do really, really appreciate it. Follow me, me on all the social media platforms, all under Ali Taylor Golf. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already. Hopefully catch up with some of you guys down here in the future. 
stay in contact.